Learning to live with less is a process that doesn't happen overnight for most people. For some, the act of consistently shedding and maintaining an intentional living space comes naturally, largely due to some reasons that we're gonna to discuss today, but for the vast majority, this is simply not the case. Now, there are tons of psychological studies and phenomena that explain why there's such a clutter problem in the world today and why we have trouble letting things go on a more personal level. You can find more information about those here and here, but while that knowledge can be helpful and motivating, it doesn't really explain how to adapt to living with less. So today I wanna to chat about why this can be such a struggle and how to get through the struggle and in the process find more happiness. And I'll also be sharing three tangible tools that can help bend that learning curve along the way. Stick around to the end because I'm gonna be giving away some of my personal favorite tools to help bend that learning curve on your journey to adapting to living with less. Hey everybody, welcome back to my channel. And if you're new here, then welcome. My name is Mia Danielle and I chat all about holistic and clutter-free spaces. And this is actually a really exciting week because August marks the one year anniversary of this YouTube channel. I can't believe that it's already been a year. So to celebrate the birthday of the Mia Danielle YouTube channel, I'm doing a big Living With Less giveaway. So stick around to the end and I'll give you all of the details and information on what's included in the giveaway and how you can get in on it. But for right now, let's go ahead and dive into the content. How to adapt to living with less. Now, it's worth mentioning that the rewards of having a spacious, minimalist haven aren't nearly as great as the process of achieving contentment and honestly, as one author put it, a sense of mastery or participation in determining the content of life. That was by Mr. Mahali, the author of the book Flow. I'm not going to butcher his last name because it's very long and I don't know how to say it. But most of us have figured out at this point that how we feel about ourselves and about the world around us, how much happiness we achieve, depends more on how our mind filters and interprets information and experiences than anything else. Now, in this book that I was just telling you about, Flow, the author talks about something called reclaiming experience, which I found really interesting. He describes social and genetic instructions as being two forces of control that when followed unquestioningly can lead to helplessness and unhappiness. So let me tell you what this means and why it matters when it comes to learning to live with less. So what are social and genetic instructions? Well, genetic instructions would be those physically guided urges, you could say, things that make us feel good. What we decide to eat or drink or just natural urges and instincts, these physical desires. Social instructions would be desires or rewards that society has agreed are worthy. So the nice house, the manicured lawn, the sports car, the latest technology, all of those social desires. So we have these physical desires and then we have these social desires. And this can lead to a lot of discontent because we're constantly reaching for the next prize that always seems to dissolve and reappear somewhere in the distance. Hello, discontent. So it's never just quite enough, right? The more we have access to, which we have a lot of access to a lot of things in the world today, the more we realize that external stimuli just doesn't really bring happiness. And as the author put it, this paradox of rising expectations, the more we have, the more we want, and the more we think we need for an elevated quality of life, this paradox of rising expectations suggests that improving the quality of life might be an insurmountable task. Now, of course, you can't just disregard society. It's there for a reason or your body because um, it's there for a reason too. But joy and meaning really should be founded internally in the ongoing stream of your life experiences, just living and enjoying what you're doing and being who you're being in the moment. So essentially the key is to master your consciousness. Now I'm aware that this sounds really taboo, but it makes perfect sense when you think about it. So stay with me. Directing your thoughts or ordering your consciousness as the author describes it is the core of intentional living. And I have no doubt that you've heard this term or that you've seen it all around the internet, but this is essentially the goal. And it's really the core of what's going to help 
any person to truly adapt to living with less and not just feel like you're ditching your stuff all the time and ending up back in the same position over and over again. It's more of an internal change. You might feel the influence of outside urges. It's not like that goes away, but the complex structure of our nervous system has created this consciousness that is self-directed, which is really freaking cool. It means, for example, that you don't have to eat every time you're hungry. You can override that biological or genetic sensation and choose not to. You don't have to purchase something just because you get the urge or because you see your friend have it. You can override that social influence, right, and choose not to. So you don't have to fall in line with social trends and impositions. You can choose to prioritize contentment and focus your intention on peace and joy and just enjoying your day-to-day -day life in the current space. A lot of it really comes down to perspective. So I think that a good thought experiment, if you will, is going camping. I like to think that camping or just downgrading your current level of sophistication and material goods in any case is a good experiment on how much less we truly can live with and oftentimes even be happier in the process. Now, don't get me wrong, I'm not ditching all of my tech either, but I do think that exploring this idea of finding the true quality of life is important for finding that balance and perspective. Because you can adapt to living with less much quicker than you would think. Case in point, our camping grounds were shared between six people and six dinner sets. We each had a single cup, a single spoon, a bowl, a plate for the entire week. It took us less than a day to adjust to washing our own dishes after each use with no dishwasher, of course, you know, we became pros at the wipe, rinse, and dry method. <laughs> even the kids. And by the end of the week, it really didn't even matter what utensil was in our hand, we just used it. And we were offered a lantern a few days in, which was one of the many things that we had forgotten at home, and declined because we had adjusted to not using one. My point is, we are made to adapt. This ability to adapt is built into us on so many different levels. The idea that an entire family routine could be adjusted in as little as a day to needing less stuff is pretty incredible if you think about it. Humans can adapt to living with less much quicker than you would ever expect. But here's the key to that. I think that our expectations and our environment have been altered. One thing that became incredibly clear to me is that our environments have a huge impact on our ability to adapt and change, including living with less. Our environment changed our expectations. Had we been home, we wouldn't have been satisfied with walking a quarter of a mile to the bathroom and sleeping without air conditioning. However, a change in environment and expectations made this exact reality almost unnoticeable. So, of course, we can't live camping all the time, and this video is not just about camping, um, but how can you bring that change of expectations and that change of environment into your everyday life? Well, I have three things that will help you to adapt to living with less. Three tools that you can add to your arsenal, ways that will help you to easily live with less and really bend that learning curve, right? It's all about making things easier. So those three things are mindfulness, versatility, and spatial constraints. So let me tell you about these three things for a little bit. And spoiler, these three things are what I base this entire Living With Less giveaway on because I think that these three things are, again, super powerful in helping you to bend the curve and make living with less easier. So number one is mindfulness. One of the great tools in your arsenal when learning to live with less is a practice of mindfulness. And I hope that you've gathered that already just by the content in this video up until this point and about mastering your consciousness and being intentional. It really does all come down to practicing mindfulness. This is absolutely yummy to me because I could live in my mind all day long. And there are two tools that I use on the regular to sharpen that process. Those are meditation and strategic journaling. So these help you to build on keeping aligned and keeping intentional. The second thing is versatility. So this is coming back into the belongings that you keep inside of your home because it becomes much easier to live with less when you have items that perform multiple functions. This way you never feel like you're doing without when you ditch some of the extra gadgets and tools because you have a single versatile item to cover. Anywhere you can ease the loss sensation when you're first getting used to letting things go is gonna help. 
Not to mention, it's really just smarter and more efficient with your space to have one thing that can serve multiple functions. And the third and final key, I might say, to living with less is spatial constraints. I have been teaching about this power practice for years. It is a core staple in my course Clutter Cure and in multiple blog posts. It's really kind of at the heart of everything. This is the bread and butter of clutter-free living. If you can give yourself firm boundaries for the belongings you use, it becomes easier to let go of the things that don't fit within those spaces and easier to keep your place looking visually spacious with the items that you do keep. I chat a little bit about this in my video on how to reduce visual clutter. You can check that one out right here. So as I said, in the spirit of helping you to easily adapt to living with less, I'm holding a living with less giveaway. Again, this is in celebration of reaching one year here on the YouTube channel. I'm really excited and I'm sharing my personal tried and true tools to help you start hacking your arsenal for learning to live with less. So for mindfulness, as I said, the two tools that I use on the regular to sharpen my mindfulness practice are meditation and strategic journaling. These really help to build on keeping aligned and keeping intentional, and I wanna share mine with you. So I'm giving away a one-year subscription to the Calm app, as well as a 90X Goal Planner. These are two of my favorite tools. I've used the 90X Planner for years now. Now, if you are not somebody who's into meditation, and I recommend that you do give it a shot, but the Calm app has all kinds of calming and centering tools aside from meditation, so you definitely will get your value out of that. For versatility, I had to think about this one. I was like, ah, oh, what are some of the most versatile things that I use inside of my home? It has to be something that I use. And the most versatile thing that I have in my home is a Ninja blender. I've tried other brands and I promptly returned them, but this thing is an incredible machine. It not only makes my healthy smoothies that you've seen in many of my videos, but I recently chopped an onion, diced, not mush, I promise, and proceeded to shred chicken for my chicken tortilla soup. I recently got rid of my gargantuan food processor because of the versatility of this thing. So I'm also giving away a Ninja blender full size as part of the Living With Less giveaway. And now for spatial constraints. I use this practice in a number of ways in my home, but probably the most notable and the thing that I've mentioned many times throughout different videos and blog posts is with our memory boxes. I know so many people struggle with letting go of sentimental items, and the truth is you don't have to. There are some things that you might wanna hold on to while still living within some boundaries. So we love our memory boxes for this exact function. We're able to put things in it that we wanna hold on to, things that the kids drew, little things and gifts that we give each other over the years. We're able to keep it safe and in the boundaries of our memory box and pull it out and look at it whenever we want to. And it's just been a really great addition for our family. So I'm gonna be giving one lucky winner a memory box bundle to get started, putting those boundaries in place. And finally, the winner is going to get access to my signature course, Clutter Cure. This course has helped hundreds of people to cure their clutter and to create inspired spaces. So altogether, that's over $500 of straight value that you could win by making some taps on your phone or clicks on your computer. It's all you. So all you have to do to enter is click the link that says giveaway down in the description. Check as many boxes as you want to check for the entries. You can get multiple entries and good luck. I'll be announcing the winner in two weeks. So why would anybody want to adapt to living with less in the first place? Well, aside from the quest for internal autonomy, like we talked about earlier, taking back that control over your intentions and your consciousness and all of that good stuff, aside from that, there are of course, psychological impacts associated with clutter that you can see in my video here, and a certain amount of freedom that comes when you reduce those ties. A lot of you I know, know what I'm talking about there. So good luck on the giveaway. I hope that you got a lot out of this video. And if you are on this journey and you are committed to making some changes inside of your space, getting a little more breathability and enjoy the process along the way, then I definitely would love to have you subscribe to my channel and turn on those notifications. I release new videos every Tuesday. Catch you next week.